we're approaching the end of the January transfer window in our 2001-2002 database save. We've done some business in January. There's still a bit more to do. We've got some new faces. But before I show you the brand new faces joining our club and some people leaving as well, if you're enjoying these videos, do please consider hitting the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. It does help me out massively, along with liking the video. Stick in your comments down in the comment section below as well. Who have we brought in then? So in the last episode, we brought in four new players in January. First up was Alfinger Holland. Chris Bart Williams was another player to join. So was Ricardo Carvalho, the future Chelsea central defender. Genuinely think this is a very good signing for us. And also a more natural right back, also right winger, in the shape of Fernando Rickson. Three further players have joined them. One, annoyingly, doesn't have a work permit because Brexit happened 20 years ago. And that player is Tobias Linderoth, 22 years old, Swedish central midfielder, signed from Stayback. Now he was out of contract at the end of the season, which meant we could sign him for £31,500. And then I realised Brexit was a thing. I say it then. After I clicked the accept, I realised Brexit was a thing and he doesn't have a work permit. So, yeah. We've got him in. We're, we're trying to loan him out, basically. He's going to hopefully be going to, I think, Galatasaray. Yeah, Galatasaray or Fenerbahce. Two sides that are willing to pay some of his wages. Which, if I'm honest, are a little bit steep. We've also brought in a second choice goalkeeper. Maybe first choice goalkeeper in the shape of Jussi Jaskalainen. Now, he's only cost £1.1 million, I think. Yeah, £1.1 million, obviously signed from Bolton because he only ever played for Bolton in England. So, yeah, Jaskalainen is in. He's not as good as Paul Jones, but he is about seven years younger than Paul Jones. So, if we were going to do the save for a few more years in the future, Jaskalainen would obviously be our number one goalkeeper probably from the end of the season. This season, he will probably also be our number one goalkeeper once he sorts out his knee ligaments. And finally... Milan Barros, the future Aston Villa man, has signed from Banneker Strava, which I think he still technically plays for Banneker Strava in real life. He went to Villa, did a whole load of stuff around Europe, can't even remember where, and then he went back to Banneker Strava at the age of about 32, possibly even older than that. So yeah, we brought in Milan Barros. He's, he's good, isn't he? He's bloody good. He's only 20. He has cost a fair amount of money, 1.7 potentially going to 2.2 million pounds, but considering this season already... He's got 15 goals and just 21 appearances for Banneker Strava. I'm hoping he can carry that on. He might not be partnered by Marion Pahars, though. He is still at the club. He will be probably playing his final game for Southampton against Blackburn in this episode. However, he might be on his way to Juventus for £5 million, potentially going to about £7.5 million. I'm not sure whether this is a good idea or not. He's got 11 goals for us in 18 appearances. Pahars is good, but it's a lot of money. Also, players have left the club as well, some on permanent deals, some on loan deals. Benali going out on a loan deal, Scott McDonald also going on a loan deal. Paul Murray, Neil Moss, Daniel Tealdi and Jay Lucas all leaving the clubs on permanent deals. The big one there, really. Neil Moss going to Arsenal to probably be a third-choice goalkeeper. In between episodes, what have we done? Well, last episode we played these three matches here. We then lost against Leicester and then beat Charlton 5-2. Beat Liverpool 2-1 and a 1-1 draw with Fulham. I don't really understand how we managed to do this. Pahars, I probably I shouldn't sell. I probably shouldn't sell it. We're selling Pahars. I'm sorry, but yeah, we've we've gone undefeated in the league since the 8th of November. We are gone on a very good undefeated run. It means we are still seventh place in the table. We are eight points away from that magic 40, which is a number, particularly in 2001, 2002, that Southampton were constantly looking at. Today, we're going to be up against third place Blackburn and fifth place Spurs. We might also play another match, depending on how long or short those matches are. So, taking a look then at the Blackburn Rovers squad. They are currently third place in the league, and there are two players who are responsible for this, and that is Marcus Bent and Matt Janssen. Matt Janssen is the third top goal scorer in the Premier League currently. Marcus Bent also 13 goals and 20 appearances. The rest of the side... It's not bad. It's not a bad side, but it's also not a great side. Steve Howey is one of their better central defenders, but he's not spectacular. He's not certainly not a third-place Premier League central defender, is he? So I think Blackburn are certainly overachieving. Matt Janssen as well. The amount of goals he scored for his ability, fair play. Fair play to you, Matthew, Le Matthew Janssen. That's his name. It's actually not Matthew. It's just Matt, isn't it? He's just called Matt. He's not got... It's not Matthew. Sorry. They've also got quite an aging squad as well. Brad Friedel 
is 30. Bear in mind, he's still got another 15 years of actual first team choice football in him, but he's 30 years old. Steve Howe is 30. Short is 33. Stiginger Bjornaby, 32 years old. McAteer's 30. Hignett's 32. Then looking onto their subs bench, you get a whole load of 30 year olds as well, 32 and up. Henning Berg, Andy Hinchcliffe. Going further down, two guys there. He's 31. Two guys. Is he good? I mean, he's, he's, yeah, he's pretty good, isn't he? Two guys, a good player. Anyway. Our starting lineup then for the Blackburn game will be Paul Jones in goal. Obviously, Jaskalainen is injured, so he's probably not going to be making his debut in today's episode. Rickson, Lundervam, Carvalho and Bridge will be our back four with Bart Williams and Oakley in the middle. Svensson and Kinkladzi on the wings. Barros will partner Marin Pahars for his final Southampton game, I assume, unless he rejects Juventus, which I don't think he will. Now, I'm not expecting to win this game. Blackburn clearly are a good side. We've already lost out to Stigging Gabionaby, who for some reason is black, which is definitely not what he was. Janssen has this ball. Plays a lovely flick through to Marcus Bent, crosses that in towards the back post, and Gary Flickcroft is there. It's 1-0. It's 22 seconds on the clock. Seven minutes now, and Blackburn possibly with another chance. Two guy loses out to Oakley. Marion Pahas, he's got Barros off in front of him. Henningberg with a great tackle. Svensson, though, finds Milan Barros, and Brad Friedel with an exceptional save for the American concedes the corner, preventing Barros scoring on his debut for the club. It's going to be Marion Pahas to take this corner. It's a header clear from Steve Howie, and that's probably going to end the highlight, unless Chris Bart Williams can do something with it. He's gone backwards to Marcus Bent. Great, Marcus Bent is now breaking free. Eight minutes on the clock, is Bent going to get another goal? What a side tackle it is from Anders Svensson. And Rickson clears that off for a throw. Rickson now with a throw of his own straight to Marcus Bent. Why is Marcus Bent the greatest footballer in the world? Is there something I've missed here? Marcus Bent's with this. Lundervarm's gone. Just let him go past him. Bent's effort is just over the bar. Still 1-0 to Blackburn. Marcus Bent is the greatest footballer on the planet Earth. It's a throw for Bjornaby to Marcus Bent. Or, sorry, should I say Cristiano Ronaldo? It's Cristiano Ronaldo on the left-hand side again. Crosses that ball in. Wayne Bridge clears. Gary Flitcroft to Mahn. Now McAteer on the right-hand side. The former Liverpool man, two guy, doesn't quite get there. Mahn is there. It's blocked. Bent finds Janssen. And Matt Janssen gets his 18th goal of the season. Blackburn are good. Why are Blackburn so good? Rickson with the throw. Pahars flicks that head on, but it's only to John Curtis. Now Oakley. Back to Bart Williams. He's going to run forward. Plays it all the way across. Wayne Bridge on that left-hand side. Kinkladzi's there. And Georgie Kinkladzi tucks that in at the front post. It's 2-1. We are back into this game thanks to the little Georgian winger. Since we pulled a goal back, it is quieting down here at St Mary's. Not a lot going on. We've got Rickson's throw to Marin Pahars, who so far in his final game for the club is uh, playing awful. And that was a prime example of it, passing straight to Steve Howie. Wayne Bridge with a yellow card across to Bart Williams. Through ball, Milan Barros takes a touch and Milan Barros gets his first ever Southampton goal. It is 2-2 here at St Mary's. This could be a good comeback. We have not been playing very well, particularly against the world's greatest footballer in the shape of Marcus Bent. But we are level terms at the moment. Hopefully it's going to be 2-2 at half time. It is 2-2 and actually looking at the stats, it's been fairly even, hasn't it? Six shots, five on target for us actually, which is pretty good. I'm going to say keep up the performance. To you, I'm not happy with you, okay? Pahars, do something, or you're getting substituted for probably Kevin Davies. Svensson with a free kick, right-footed. It's taken a weird bit of curl. Carvalho heads over the bar. That was an odd free kick, I think. That was supposed to be like a lofted free kick to the back post. It just looked a bit weird. We've got a throw through Wayne Bridge. Where are you going to go? Off to Matt Oakley. Plays it on the ground to Marion Pahars. So far, since his team talk at halftime, hasn't really improved, does he? Bridge gets this ball back into the area. Pahars goes for goal, and Marion Pahars into the bottom corner. Maybe the team talk did help. We are 3-2 up now against Blackburn. How are we turning this around? Like, we were not good in the first 20 minutes of this game. We are now 3-2 to the good. Pahars goes to a 7.3. We need to probably do a change maybe for Oakley and or Svensson. Rickson with a throw to Milan Barros. Back to Chris Bart Williams, who I think has done a good job. 7.2 in the middle of the pitch today. Matt Oakley collects. Back to Bart Williams once again. Where is he going to go? He's gone long. It's Georgie Kinkladzi. There's three in the middle. Crosses that ball in. Back post is Anders Svensson. I'm just going to start picking on every one of our players and saying they're playing badly. And then they'll score a goal, apparently. Right, Oakley's definitely coming off. We are going to bring on Mark Draper. Draper is very good. I just don't like playing him. He's, he's 31 years old. I don't think he played a huge amount for Southampton in real life, if I remember correctly. It was only like a season or two. But yeah, I, I don't really want to play him. 
That's all the changes we're going to do for the moment. Another bit of transfer news that I just ignored. Matt Letizia is leaving the club at the end of the season and off to Toronto. Pahas's corner comes in. John Curtis clears. Rickson is eventually going to get there. There he is. Pahas wants that back. Or Rickson. Sure. Do, do what you want, buddy. Just do what you want. Run down that right-hand side. Plays it to Pahas. Backwards for Bart Williams. I'd love Chris Bart Williams to score a goal. I think he's earned it today. So has Wayne Bridge, actually, on a 7.8. Mark Draper, the bald-headed central midfielder, plays it towards Jason McAteer. And Marcus Bent is going to score a goal here, isn't he? I'm not sure who's with him. It's Paul Jones. Paul, Paul Jones. What a save that is from Marcus Bent. Bent has been a menace. Every time he's got the ball, he's been an absolute menace. Also, Newcastle Fulham's 4-4. That's a bit strange. And uh, Spurs are beating Villa 4-0 thanks to Les Ferdinand. Milan Barros has the ball for us. And is that Marcus Bent? Send him off. Straight red. Nope. Right, we're going to do ourselves another change. I'm not sure who to change. We're playing so well at the moment. I'm thinking King Cladzi. We're gonna, Yeah, we're going to do King Cladzi for Andy Impey, who is actually training up to be a left back. He's kind of the backup to Wayne Bridge. But he can also play as a winger instead as well. Uh, that's, all, that's all we're going to go for. Also, Steve Marley's just scored for Fulham. So that match is now 5-4 to Fulham. The Newcastle-Fulham game. Rickson plays that ball over the top towards nobody. Two guy. We need to steal this, really. Matt Janssen. He's only got one goal so far today. Down the right-hand side is Jason McAteer. Wayne Bridge is with him. Bridge might be getting sent off here. The cross comes in. And Marcus Bent is there at the front post. It's 4-3. Why is Marcus Bent so good? He's got a goal and two assists now to his name. I, I don't get it. Maybe we try and buy Marcus Bent as well. Rickson with this for us on the right-hand side. About 10 minutes left of normal time. Milan Barros. He's been tackled by two guys. Bart Williams goes in for a slide. Doesn't get the ball. And Mark Dra what is What is this highlight? We've missed the ball a few times. Mark Draper's chucking challenges all over the place. Marcus Bent's going to score a screamer any second now. Two guy over the top. Bent chests it down. Rickson. What a slide tackle that is. To be fair, this match is a great game for the neutrals, isn't it? Milan Barros with this ball. Is he going to get a second of the game? Brad Friedel makes a save. It's going to go off for a corner. Ten minutes left of normal time to play. I'm thinking we need to look at bringing Wayne Bridge off because he's very tired. Pahaz is going to take this corner. Milan Barros is there. Barros almost puts that one in for five. There's been a lot of goals scored today. A lot of goals scored today. We are going to do basically drop Andy Impey into left back. We're going to then... Do we put Barros on the wing? And then we can bring on Kevin Davies up front. That works. That works, doesn't it? So Fulham are 5-4 up against Newcastle. Spurs are 5-1 up against Villa. We are 4-3 up against Blackburn. Is it going to be 4-4? It's not. Draper gets clear. Milan Barros is going to break free. It's two. It's... What are you doing, Kevin? Get on side. Barros is going to run with this. Play it across to Kevin Davies. He's not going to bother. And Milan Barros makes it 5-3. On his debut, gets two goals. This, this is a good match. I've enjoyed this game. This has been a fun match to watch and a fun match to commentate. Still not quite over. We've got a minute. Hinchcliffe to Matt Janssen. Janssen, we've kind of kept him quiet even though he has scored a goal today. Janssen plays it all the way across to Craig Short. First time pass and of course Marcus Bent's there. Why is Marcus Bent so good at football? He is the greatest footballer the world has ever seen. And we never knew it. Well, we won. We won. 5-4 on the night. How I, I mean, that was a great game for the neutrals. I thought the Fulham-Newcastle game was a great game for the neutrals. So was this one. So looking at the other matches that took place today, Arsenal-United, 2-2. Villa-Spurs, 5-1. A 5-2 between Ipswich and Derby. A 5-4 between Fulham and Newcastle. A 5-4 between Southampton and Blackburn. And a 4-1 between Leeds and West Ham. Bolton and Leicester, a 1-1 draw. Boring. Marcus Bent, why are you the world's greatest footballer? Why? What are you doing to be the world's great... I mean, you'll fit our system. We, we might be signing Marcus Bent after that performance. They want 28 million. We're not signing Marcus Bent. Right, it is transfer deadline day and we have just concluded a whole load of business. The, day, the deadline day is still going. We've still got nearly 14 hours of football. Stuart Ripley leaving the club on a free transfer, going to QPR. Yes, we've signed Joe Hart. Uh, yeah, I know he's 14. I just wanted to see whether we could sign a essentially a future prospect and what they would think he would be like. He's 14. He's he's going to turn 15 very soon. He's not good, is he? Let's be honest. He's not good. And uh, the, the board and everyone, and the fans in particular, hate it. He's cost £85,000, lad. Shut up. And the big one is Marion Pahaz leaving the club to go to Juventus. £7.5 million. Pounds. I, I mean, this is a transfer that would have never happened in real life. Pahaz was great for Southampton. 
he wasn't Juventus great. This was back when Juve were one of the biggest clubs in the world. I mean, they kind of still are, aren't they? And Yussi Askelainen's annoyed that we've sold Pahars. Shut up, Yussi. You've just joined the club. And obviously, Tobias Linderoff has also gone out on loan. He has gone to Fenerbahce, which is annoying because I kind of wanted to play him. And that's it for transfer deadline day. We didn't do any more business. I tried. I desperately tried to sign Paolo Onechop from Manchester City. However, part of the deal was they signed a replacement striker. And the only striker they wanted to sign was Kevin Davies, who I didn't want to sell to Manchester City. We kind of got stuck in a bit of a catch-22. So we didn't buy anybody new. We've done all of our business. I want to have a quick look, though, at the sort of the transfer business that's gone on. The big transfers. Vieira from Arsenal to Real Madrid. That's huge. Imagine if that actually happened. That's an absolute ridiculous transfer to do. It's a lot of money. He's, he's so, so good, isn't he? Also, Sergo Rebrov from Spurs, where, if I'm honest, he wasn't very good at Spurs, was he? He had all the promise in the world. Him and Shevchenko at Dynamo Kiev were amazing. And then they split them up. Sergo Rebrov has found his way over to Barcelona, apparently. And some guy called Johan Vogel, who, if I'm honest, I don't really know who you are, but you look very good at football. Apparently, you are playing for Grasshoppers and then a little bit of PSV, and now you've made your way over to Arsenal. Obviously, I'm not going to go through all of these, but there are some interesting names on this list of players leaving, basically, the Premier League to go elsewhere. One that I have spotted is Lee Bowyer going from Leeds to Real Madrid, which is uh, it's a bit of a strange one, isn't it? £7.5 million for Lee Bowyer to go and join. Is Steve McManaman at Real Madrid at this point? I feel like he might have, might have gone at this point. Nope, Steve McManaman. We could have tried to sign Steve McManaman. Jackie McNamara going from Celtic to Manchester United. Emerson Tome from Sunderland to Arsenal. Zurab Kishnis, really, a player that I almost signed, made his way over to Ipswich. So, uh, I mean, Solano has ended up at Liverpool. There's a lot of silly transfers that have taken place, isn't there? This, this is just fun to look at. It's just fun to look at, if I'm honest. We found a ridiculous one. We found Marlon King. Marlon King has gone from Gillingham to Porto on loan. No, he's gone He's gone to Gillingham. From, sorry, from Gillingham to Porto and then on loan to Braga. This is amazing. I love this. This is so ridiculous. Hamilton Rickard, we uh, looked at him earlier. He actually ended up going to Manchester City. Why did they... They wanted to sign a replacement for one shop. They've already got one. It's Hamilton Rickard. Right, with transfer day out of the way, then we're now going to go forward. Just one more day to play Tottenham Hotspur at White Hart Lane. Obviously, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium doesn't exist in this world. We're going back to the lane against Spurs, who are now fifth. I guess this is actually going to be not for position, but if we can win, we're certainly going to close the gap on the top six. So, fifth place, Tottenham Hotspur, then looking at their squad... There are some interesting names that seems to have joined them. Number one on that list is Pep Guardiola, who is a defensive midfielder, 31 years of age. Um, I, he's, he's all right, isn't he? He's awful in the air. He's awful in the air. Why is he so bad in the air? He's 5'11". You'd think he'd be all right. Maybe heading the ball a little bit, but apparently not. Much like quite a lot of sides, I guess, around this era, there's a lot of ageing players in their squad when you look at, obviously, Guardiola, Poyer's 34. Darren Anderson's getting on at 29, surprisingly, not injured. Teddy Sheringham, as an attacking midfielder, 35 years of age as well. Is he any good still? Sheringham, yes, yeah, he's, he's still pretty good. Can't run, but then again, he is 35. I wouldn't expect him to. Somebody who can run is Garbo Wow. He is a brand new signing. I think they signed him at the start of January. He is one of those players, if you played a championship manager, 0102, I guess. He was obviously very, very good in that save partially because of his pace, I guess. Looking at that list of players, I think we might struggle against Spurs. I think we might struggle. They've got, defensively, they're very good. Stephen Carr is four and a half star. Then you've got the two defence midfielders of Guardiola and Poye, which obviously, they're very, very good. Stefan Everson leading the line, 13 goals so far this season. He's not amazing, is he? He's not, he's got no pace. Maybe that's, that's kind of a good thing. Maybe that's the thing. Starting lineup wise then for the Spurs game, Paul Jones will be our keeper. Jaskalainen still injured. Rickson, Carvalho, Torre, and Bridge will be at the back. Lundekvam has picked up a suspension for too many yellow cards. It's going to be Draper and Oakley in the middle of the pitch with Svensson, Kinkladze, Davies, and Barros leading the line. Kevin Davies is basically coming in to replace Marin Pahaz. It's a very different strike force to what we had against Blackburn, which was two. I guess short. I don't know. Is Barrel short? I feel like he isn't. No, he's six foot. Two fast players. Two very fast options, whereas Davies, not as fast. A bit more of a clinical finisher. 
Are we going to have another match like the last match where we have about 45 minutes worth of highlights or is this going to be a normal, simple match where maybe it's going to be about 10 highlights for the entire game? 15 minutes in and we've got our first action. Spurs with the ball. Darren Anderton back to Jan. He's going to run in towards the penalty area. He's gone for goal. Paul Jones can easily hold on to that one. Was that the highlight? I feel like it was. It definitely was. Colo Torre then with the ball to Mark Draper. Matt Oakley. Stops and plays it off towards that right-hand side for Anders Svensson. He's got two options in front. Davies is one. Barros is the other. Milan Barros almost gets his third goal for the club. King he has gone over to take the corner. It's towards the front post. Chris Perry heads that ball clear. Carvalho collects this. Or, or not. Fair enough. So far, this match has been a much calmer affair than the Blackburn game. It's still nil-nil. Very little going on in terms of highlights. Rickson's throw. Davies heads back to Rickson. We're going to get this cross in four in the box, wearing red shirts. Davies is one. It's blocked. Pep Guardiola can clear that ball upfield. That ends the highlights. Still very little going on. And the highlights that we are getting, they're not exactly good highlights, are they? Christian Zieger to Garbalawau across. Oyvind Leonardson, Teddy Sheringham. Garbalawau's in on goal. Paul Jones with a spectacular save to prevent the new signing from scoring there. Guardiola steps up with the corner. Goran Bunge... Whatever it is. I know his name's Goran something. Okay? I know that much. I can't pronounce his surname. And now he's taken a free kick. Of course he's taken a free kick. Richard Nopper. I know you. Pep Guardiola in the centre circle. Oyvind Leonardsson's in on goal here. What a ball that is. And what a finish that is from the Norwegian international. It's 1-0 to Spurs. And at half-time it remains 1-0 to Spurs. It's been even that Spurs have had the better chances. We have been unlucky. We're going to go with that. Wingers, that's where our problem is today. King Gladzi and Svensson both struggling. 6-4 and a 6-5 rating. In fact, Svensson just drops down to a 6-4 as we start the second half. And the second half has been as exciting as the first with very little going on. Right, Svensson's coming off. He's on a 6-3. Tessum is going to come on on that right-hand side. Looking at the other numbers. Oakley playing poorly. We're going to bring on Bart Williams. We're also going to take off Wayne Bridge for Andy Impey. All of our changes 65 minutes into this match. I'm hoping maybe that's going to do something. Why didn't I take King Kladzi off? I just ignored him, didn't I? I'm going to give him a shout. I'm going to give him a demand more. We're 1-0 down. Darren Anderton has this. Christian Jan with this. Runs in towards the centre. He's gone for a long-range effort. Hits it well over the bar. Impey's throw. Barros. Back to Chris Bart-Williams. Back to Andy Impey. The full-back crosses that in. Davies is there. I think everybody was offside. Draper. Down to Bart-Williams again. I feel like there might be a goal coming here, you know? Rickson, no, Tessum steals it off Rickson. Across to Mark Draper. His first effort is blocked by somebody, and now Spurs can possibly counter-attack with Teddy Sheringham. Sheringham's got no pace. Rickson steals it off Lowell, plays it back to Paul Jones. And is this the end of the highlight, maybe? No? Paul Jones, what? Paul, what are you doing? Lowell's coming in for goal, and Paul Jones makes a save. Okay, we, got, we saved that one a little bit. Anderton's corner comes in quickly. Sheringham is there. Paul Jones can hold on from the ageing striker who I think is playing in midfield. Oh, wonderful. We've done all of our subs and Barros is injured. Well, we're just going to have to carry on. We've got about four minutes left of normal time. I don't know whether that... Is Barros injury prone? Is that, is that a thing that I've just ignored? Well, full time then at White Hart Lane. It was an even game. We just could not score some goals and we're going to give a shouting, I think, to probably King Kladzi and uh, some of the other options who basically were garbage. I'm going to say, I'm not happy. Georgie, I'm furious with you. Barros is out for three to six weeks. Okay, that's, I mean, it's not great, but it's fine because we've still got BT, we've got Davies. It's, it's fine, it's not a problem. And that is our first defeat in 13 games. That's actually pretty good going. Next episode is it's going to be a big one. It's going to be a big one. We are going to go to the end of March where we will face Chelsea, Bolton, and Arsenal. We're going to do all three of those in the next episode. It is sixth, first, and bottom of the table, Bolton, which hopefully we should win at least one of those games, but that is going to be tough. Thank you very much for watching what I guess is probably a transfer special episode of the 0102 database. If you are enjoying these videos, do please consider hitting that like button. Hit the subscribe button as well if you're new and you want to see more of this type of content. I've got loads on the channel. You can go click on the channel and find it, and I'll see you in the next one. Chelsea, Bolton, Arsenal... We're going to lose all three, aren't we? See you next time.